Hello and welcome to In-Depth, I'm Tina Jha. On Wednesday, the Appellate Tribunal or the Special Court of the World Trade Organization formally stopped functioning because it has no judges. So what this effectively means that there is no court to judge global trade disputes. The United States of America has been accused of deliberately blocking the appointment of new judges. This follows the US President Donald Trump's consistent attempts to highlight what the US calls the WTO's bias against America. What will be the fallout? Will this result in full-blown global trade wars? Less than 1% of the global trade disputes reach the tribunal for arbitration. But more than the arbitration, what the existence of WTO did provide was an impetus or even a strong nudge to governments to settle differences. A collapse of the institution itself, it is feared, would be a strong motivation for aggressive governments to impose their rules on global trade. Today, we consider these issues and the pressures on the global trade regime, as well as the impact of the WTO and its role in assisting the free and fair flow of global trade. Well, so the World Trade Organization is in the middle of its worst crisis ever. Its dispute settlement mechanism is paralyzed with the United States blocking fresh appointments of judges. The global body is also staring at a potential collapse by the year 2020 as US threatens to block its budget, accusing it of overstepping its mandate. While China, Russia, EU and other members try to cobble up efforts to save the global body, for now, the international trade disputes remain in a limbo. A stalemate between the US and other members is pushing the World Trade Organization to the verge of collapse. Its appellate body effectively stopped functioning on Wednesday as the United States blocked new appointments to the panel, accusing the court of serious overreach. A minimum of three judges are needed for the appellate body to fulfill its role as the arbiter of the global trade disputes. With two judges completing their term on 10th of December, the powerful body has become dysfunctional. Robert Azevedo, the Director General of the World Trade Organization, said it will take a few months to fix its main body for settling trade disputes. I think there is no doubt in the minds of anybody's mind that uh, we have compromised the dispute settlement system of the WTO. That doesn't mean that it's over. The dispute settlement mechanism is going to continue. Members are going to continue to solve their disputes through panels. Um, even the second stage, so an appeal, uh, can happen. Their members are going to continue uh, to um, resolve their disputes through arbitration. The main problem uh, is twofold. The first thing is there are uh, three different uh, uh, aspects of WTO functioning. The first one is redressal of grievances, disputes. The second one is about new negotiations. And the third one is whatever has been agreed upon by the parties, monitoring that by other countries as to whether a particular country has abided by its commitments. The appellate body has the final say on global trade disputes that cover billions of dollars of international trade and its decisions are considered to be binding. The current situation also signals the potential demise of the 24-year-old WTO itself, as settling disputes has been its most important function. As a WTO dispute settlement body, the appellate body has seven judges with staggered terms. Each judge has a four-year term and can be reappointed for an additional four years. Over the last couple of years, the membership of the appellate body has dwindled to three from the required seven. The United States has been blocking reappointment of the WTO's appeals judges since 2017. The understaffed body has been unable to stick to its two to three month deadline for appeals filed in the last few years. Due to lack of quorum, if any party in a dispute appeals the initial decision, the dispute remains indefinitely unresolved. Now, if one of the pillars falls, the other two become weakened. Now, the most important pillar was the dispute resolution pillar. 
because if a dispute arises as to a violation of a WTO agreement and if there is no redressal or recourse, then every country will feel free, especially the more powerful ones amongst them, to violate the WTO agreement or their commitments. The US has also threatened to block WTO's budget that could lead to the international organization to entirely shut down on 1st of January 2020. So that is exactly what has happened now because uh, as of Tuesday night, the WTO appellate body uh, has only one member left and at least three members are required to decide a, an appeal. However, China and European countries are making efforts to preserve the WTO. The European Union has proposed an interim court to replicate functions performed by the appellate body. Canada and Norway are also on board with the plan. China has offered to work with the majority of World Trade Organization to address the challenges. Russia is also assessing the plan put forth by the EU. The WTO's dispute settlement procedure is seen as vital to smooth international trade, with over 500 international disputes brought to the WTO and over 350 rulings issued since 1995. The current developments put India at a disadvantage and will create a more challenging trade environment. India is already facing a rising number of dispute cases, especially on agricultural products, including sugarcane. There is now great uncertainty over the dispute settlement process. With the appellate body becoming non-functional, countries may be compelled to implement rulings by the panel for lack of appeal. With inputs from Vipul Agarwal, Bureau Report, Rajasabha TV. The Trump administration has forced the chief international trade dispute referee, the appellate branch of the WTO's dispute settlement body, to lose its ability to function this week with its continued blocking of new appointments to the judges panel. Now behind the US move is years of grievances against the World Trade Body, including the accusation that the WTO is undermining Trump's America first policy. US President Donald Trump has for months blocked the appointments of judges to the World Trade Organization Appeals Court accusing the world body of overstepping and derailing his America First policy agenda. The move comes as Trump escalates protectionist policies on multiple fronts, including plans to extend punitive tariffs to virtually all imports from China. The White House has also ramped up trade threats against US allies in South America and the European Union. Trump argues that the WTO has unfairly undermined the U.S. position in those negotiations. What he forgets, however, is that the organization had in October delivered a huge victory to the U.S. with a record $7.5 billion award over illegal subsidies that the EU gave to Airbus. The U.S. Uh, has a few grievances, which it has been mentioning. The first one is that it feels that the appellate body has taken on more powers than were given to it under the dispute settlement understanding. The first one is the power of precedence, creating precedence. In the case of the Supreme Court, for instance, whatever the Supreme Court in India decides, later on can be quoted by the High Courts as well as the Supreme Court as a precedence. Now that is not allowed according to the US uh, in terms of the WTO agreement. The appellate body has to decide each case uh, separately and on merit without taking into account what has happened in the past. Now the US, if I may quote uh, a few cases, in Japan alcohol, the WTO was created on the 1st of January 1995. 1996 there were a large number of cases. The US brought a case against Canada periodicals. It is known as Canada periodicals. It brought a case against Japan, Japan alcohol. There are other cases also. In all of these, the US quoted the rulings of GATT panels, which took, you know, were uh, given before 1995. Trump's move essentially takes the world back to an era when trade rivalries between nations were settled with tariff walls, trade barriers and protectionism rather than the legal route. With the Trump administration blocking the naming of any new judges, no new justices have replaced those whose terms expired.
We can devise all sorts of interim me mechanisms and stop gaps, but we cannot abandon what must be our priority, namely to find a permanent solution. He says this is not something that we can uh, outsource to academics or lawyers or think tanks, and we can't rely solely on Geneva experts either. It's a political issue that requires a political approach in Geneva and in capitals. The United States was at the forefront in crafting a world trade body in the post-World War II era. The thought behind forming the organization was to tame the very economic nationalism that had unleashed the horrors of the 1930s and then a global conflagration. When, in 1994, that international body took the shape of the World Trade Organization, it pushed for greater trade liberalization and included a binding dispute settlement system in the appellate body, the very system that is on the verge of a collapse now. Since coming to power, Trump has launched a series of unilateral trade wars that have all but rendered the WTO irrelevant. He has dusted off decades-old U.S. laws to justify slapping tariffs on NATO allies, European partners, Canada, Mexico, much of the rest of Latin America and repeatedly China. The specific U.S. grievances that have led to the current crisis include complaints about how long appeals take and how all-encompassing the legal reviews have become. The U.S. argues that successive rulings by the WTO appellate judges have essentially stripped away in court trade tools that the U.S. never gave up at the negotiating table. America claims this is a violation of the WTO understanding that it won't take away rights or add obligations to any member nations. Now, the WTO is a successor organization to the GATT, but in the GATT system, the rulings of the WTO, uh, the GATT, were not binding. So it was based on consensus. A country could adopt it, not adopt it. But the US quoted all those examples. It has done so till quite recently. Even in the recent cases, it has been quoting WTO rulings of the appellate body as well as panels. But now, since the US has been in violation of various agreements, especially on steel, aluminum, raising tariffs against various countries. So the US now feels that the appellate body, if it goes by the jurisprudence, it will rule against the US. While there are many that believe that the WTO's dispute settlement system falling by the wayside is not a setback, many others see this as the clock turning back to the right of the mighty era. Bureau Report, Raja Sabha TV. Time for a short break on the program, but on the other side, we'll talk about some of the major disputes at the WTO. Do stay with us. Welcome back. You're watching In Depth. While most of the disputes that reach the appellate body of the WTO involve the United States of America, a few cases did involve India as well. Which are these cases? Let's find out about them in this report. Since its inception in 1995, the World Trade Organization's dispute settlement system has resolved many trade-related disputes between member states. It received over 500 complaints in which the WTO used both political negotiation and adjudication for dispute resolution. India has been an active participant in the WTO dispute settlement system as complainant in 21 cases and as respondent in 22 cases. Until recently, India was involved in 14 WTO disputes, all of them handled by domestic law firms. Earlier this July, Commerce and Industries Minister Piyush Goyal informed Parliament about these cases that pertain to disputes concerning measures on non-immigrant visas, the importation of certain agricultural products, solar cells and solar modules, iron and steel products, export-related measures, sugar and sugarcane and tariffs on ICT products, among others. In a dispute against the US that challenged India's key export subsidy schemes, including the one for special economic zones, India suffered a setback last month at the WTO, which ruled these export subsidy programs violated its norms. 
The dispute panel rejected India's claim that it was exempted from the prohibition on export subsidies under the special and differential treatment provisions of the WTO's agreement on subsidies and countervailing measures. As per the panel recommendations, India needed to withdraw the prohibited subsidies under the EOU, EHTP, BTP schemes, EPCG scheme and MEIS within 120 days. India has filed an appeal against the WTO panel report. One of the most famous cases and the early cases was against uh, the US, India wool shirts and blouses, in which the US uh, imposed quotas against India. And uh, of course, India complained and uh, the verdict was in India's favor. The second uh, and perhaps the most important case so far has been on removing quantitative restrictions by India. This was filed jointly by the US and the European Union and a few other countries. India did not allow free imports of all products because it had a balance of payments problem. It had an adverse balance of payments. Now, this case was filed sometime in 97. And uh, after the whole process was over, appellate body compliance, etc. In 2001, India had to open up its market to imports and uh, without taking recourse to any quantitative restrictions. Earlier in June, India had won a major trade dispute against the US with a dispute settlement panel pronouncing that subsidies and mandatory local content requirements instituted by eight American states breached global trade rules. In a significant 100-page report, the three-member panel largely upheld India's claims that subsidies and local content requirement in 11 renewable energy programs in eight U.S. states violated core global trade rules. The panel also asked the U.S. to ensure that these states are in conformity with trade rules. Some of India's ongoing active disputes include DS430 that relates to import restrictions by India on certain agricultural products, including the poultry and poultry products, the complainant is United States. DS456 that relates to the domestic content requirements in the Jawaharlal Nehru National Solar Mission program of MNRE. DS-436 is all about the exorbitant countervailing duty imposed by the US on certain hot-rolled carbon steel products originating from India. There was a case against export subsidies which were being given in India. We need forex. So we have to sort of give uh, motivation to our exports. We have to give concessions to our export. We need to give subsidies to our export. Since WTO's inception, India has joined as third party in over 90 cases of the total 480 cases of the global trade body. With inputs from Vipul Agarwal, Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. And let's now give you a brief history and the role of the World Trade Organization. The WTO is the only global international organization dealing with the rules of trade between nations. At its heart are the WTO agreements negotiated and signed by the bulk of the world's trading nations and ratified in their parliaments. The goal is to ensure that trade flows as smoothly, predictably and freely as possible. With 164 member countries, the purpose of World Trade Organization is to promote international commerce. Established in 1995, the WTO is based in Geneva, in Switzerland. It is the successor to the General Agreement on Tariffs and Trade, or the GATT, a group founded in 1948 whose rules created the modern multilateral trading system. The primary objective of WTO is to help free and predictable flow of trade. It does this by administrating trade agreements, acting as a forum for trade negotiations, settling trade disputes, reviewing national trade policies, building trade capacity of developing economies, cooperating with other international organizations. WTO's 164 members account for 98% of the world trade. 22 countries have the negotiating membership. The WTO is run by its member governments and all major decisions are made by the ministerial conference that meets roughly every two years. A general council conducts the organization's business at intervals between ministerial conferences. Since the inaugural conference in Singapore in 1996, there have been 11 such meetings. 
The 12th is scheduled to take place in June 2020 in Kazakhstan. The WTO's guiding principles remain the pursuit of open borders, guarantee of the most favoured nation principle, non-discriminatory treatment and a commitment to transparency in the conduct of its activities. However, critics argue that WTO is pursuing an agenda driven by business interests and that its rules undermine the sovereignty of its member states. In recent years, the lack of progress in talks has led some countries to seek trade agreements among smaller groups. Currently, WTO is facing its worst crisis due to hostility by one of its main members, the United States, that could lead to a potential shutdown of the organization in the near future. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. And that's it from us in today's edition of In-Depth. We'll be back same time tomorrow now with a comprehensive view on some other subject of current significance. In case you missed the television broadcast of our program, you can also watch it online on YouTube and Twitter. And of course, you can also send in your feedback and suggestions about our program. Thank you for your time.